Good evening, bonsoir. I'm Councillor Cynthia Lullum. On behalf of the Mayor and Council of Westmount, I thank you for your participation this evening. Au nom du Maire, Mairesse et, la conseil, et le Conseil de Westmount, je vous remercie de votre participation ce soir. It's my pleasure to introduce Nathalie Jodouin, Assistant Director, and Yuki Kropas, our Architecture and Permits Officer, both from the Westmount Urban Planning Department, who will review the history and background of this heritage recognition. Thank you. Alors, bonsoir. Euh, on peut aller à la diapositive suivante. Euh, je vais vous présenter euh, l'ordre du jour. La rencontre de ce soir est une rencontre virtuelle, ce qui veut dire qu'elle est à distance. Euh, C'est une réunion du comité euh, local du patrimoine de Westmount euh, qui est en rediffusion sur YouTube Live. Alors, this evening, we have a video conference uh, of the uh, public seance, public meeting of the local heritage council of the city of Westmount, uh, which is being uh, streamed live on uh, YouTube. Uh, L'ordre du jour uh, va aller comme suit. Bon, Madame uh, Lalam nous a présenté. Donc ça, c'était l'item 1. L'item 2, on va parler de l'objectif de la rencontre de ce soir. Ça va être suivi en trois par le patrimoine de la résidence au 178 Côte-Saint-Antoine. Euh, quatre, la protection de ce patrimoine par une citation municipale. On va expliquer ce, que, ce à quoi ça consiste. Cinq, on va vous donner un aperçu du règlement de citation. Et euh, six, il y aura une période de questions. So, our um, agenda this evening was um, first by the introduction from Councillor Lalum uh, of this uh, sitting, this meeting. Um, second, we will discuss the objective of the meeting. Three, we will uh, present the heritage of uh, the property at 178 Cote Saint Antoine the Road. Four, um, the mm -hmm. protection of this heritage by a municipal recognition. Five, uh, a uh, overview of the uh, project of uh, bylaw for this recognition, and it will be followed by a question period. Uh, ce soir, on va parler dans les deux langues. Uh, pas toujours dans une version bilingue où on donne tout tra en traduction. Um, et toute question, tout commentaire qui pourrait être fait par un résident peut l'être fait dans la langue de son choix. So this evening, uh, we will be uh, addressing you in both languages, um, not necessarily in a full translation, uh, but there'll be parts in French, parts in English. And uh, any question or comment that uh, can be made by a resident can be done in the language of his or her choice. If I may interject, I forgot to introduce the members of the committee. So if I may, um, the members of the Local Heritage Committee are Julia Gersovitz, David Hanna, Caroline Breslau, Eric Morosi, who is absent this evening, Gerald Seuferman, and myself. Thank you. Um, uh, with regards to question concerning the questions of the um, it is possible to ask questions via Euh, la plateforme YouTube, il y a avec le volet chat qui est disponible. Donc, si vous êtes sur le site de la ville, vous pouvez avoir accès à, dans la fenêtre à, en cliquant sur la fenêtre ou l'icône YouTube. Vous pouvez avoir accès à la, au lien qui amène dans le, la fonction YouTube qui vous donne accès au chat. Euh, ou euh, vous pouvez aussi déposer des commentaires pendant la période qui va suivre la présentation de ce soir sur une période de deux semaines. So, with regards to questions from the public, uh, you may use the uh, chat function of the YouTube um, website. So, if you're on the city website, you click on the video image and you can uh, gain access to the YouTube platform. There, there will be a chat box in which you can um, type in your question. Please um, uh, 
cite your name, full name, and your address in order for us to be able to identify who is asking the question. Alors, euh, on va maintenant parler de l'objectif de la rencontre. Ce soir, la rencontre vise à informer. Alors, c'est la première fois qu'on fait une euh, citation municipale à Westmount pour un bâtiment, une propriété où on couvre l'ensemble du bâtiment qui est du domaine privé. Alors, l'objectif, c'est d'expliquer aux résidents, dans le cadre municipal, qui est un gouvernement, euh, de comment ça, se, ça procède et euh, donc vous expliquer cette citation qui a été un projet de règlement qui a été déposé. Ensuite, l'objectif est de recevoir des résidents, euh, leur représentation qui seront transmises au conseil municipal pour consideration avant l'adoption finale du règlement. So the objective this evening is to inform the residents uh, within the uh, municipal government process that uh, there is this um, uh, projet de règlement, um, bylaw project that was uh, uh, submitted in, uh, to, to council. And um, The objective is to receive from the residents their representations that will be considered by the council before uh, uh, any adoption of the final bylaw. Uh, si vous souhaitez émettre vos commentaires par écrit au cours des deux prochaines semaines, vous pouvez le faire par écrit, donc au par courriel, envoyez votre correspondance à legal at westmount.org uh, ou selon l'explication que je vous ai donnée tout à l'heure, pour ce soir, via la plateforme uh, YouTube et la fonction chat. So, in order to communicate um, your uh, comments to uh, council, please send in your uh, um, email at legal at westmont.org or if you wish to um, only have the questions read this evening, then uh, you can use the YouTube platform with the chat function. Merci. Thank you, Nathalie. Um, so the current uh, heritage recognition um, project that we are carrying through is uh, a heritage recognition that was previously uh, taken on by the government. And in 2012, the government of Quebec transferred that power to the municipalities to be able to uh, give this heritage recognition um, to buildings on their, on their own territory. This uh, heritage recognition um, project is a legal process that comes from the Cultural Act. So in French, uh, le, la loi sur le patrimoine culturel. It's a legal process that uh, we are obligated to follow. Um, we see on the left uh, the legal process that's taken from the French um, guide uh, provided by the government. And on the right, it's been translated in English by the city of West Westmount. So in order to carry out a heritage recognition on a building or um, heritage immovable in Westmount, Uh, one has to, the city has to first begin by establishing a local heritage council. Uh, the second step would be for um, the city to present the heritage recognition project, the proposal or propose the project to the municipal council. Following this step, um, the city has to adopt the notice of motion, in which case a transmission of the written notice of motion is sent to the owner or the, um, whether that's a building or a heritage removable or a, a heritage, so on. Uh, the fifth step is that the city has to pub publish the public notice regarding the local heritage council meeting. And then we are now at the sixth step, which is the public meeting, um, led by the local heritage council. Following this evening, uh, the transmission of the local heritage council's notice um, will be sent to the municipal council um, in which, where, where which we will be transmitting the comments. 
And then at this point, uh, we would then continue to adopt the heritage recognition bylaw. Once the heritage recognition bylaw has been adopted, uh, the transmission of the heritage recognition bylaw is sent to the owner and also sent to the cultural heritage registrar for inscription. So as I mentioned earlier tonight, we are at the step where we, where we are holding, where the local heritage council is holding the public meeting. I'll continue by giving a, a very brief um, history of the project. So it, it began in, in 2019. Um, earlier on in 2019, uh, in September, on September 17th, the Local Heritage Council gave the recommend, uh, recommended that the uh, heritage immovable or the immovable located at 178 Côte Saint Antoine Road be uh, recognized as a heritage um, recognized as a heritage building. On October 17th, the General Committee endorsed the LHC recommendation, uh, in which case that led to the process of carrying out uh, two heritage studies: one for the residence, the building, and one for the landscape. On July 21st, the transmission of the notice of motion was sent to the owners. On September 8th, the first reading of the bylaws, bylaw number 1552 was presented. And uh, as you know, tonight we're holding the public meeting and the second reading of the bylaw will be presented on October 19th, uh, which is the same evening that the bylaw will be adopted. I will pass the microphone to Julia Gersovich, the chair of the Local Heritage Council. Good evening, everybody. It's very curious that we are using a 21st century technology to um, recognize an early 19th century building, but that's what we're doing. We're spanning almost 200 years in technology. Um, the Good House has a remarkable heritage value. It is um, uh, really being cited for its authenticity and its integrity. It's a building that was built in the 1840s as one of four properties that were designed for tenants at a time that Westmount was not Westmount. It was not even a recognized village. It was a, a small collection of houses that lay very far outside of the city. Imagine as well that the city of Montreal was really bounded by the old, uh, virtually the old walls of the city. There was nothing that, um, um, nothing built up between old Montreal and Westmount. So very much in the outskirts of, of everything, a real suburban experience, um, Mr. Hayes decided to build four uh, houses. Uh, built between 1840 and 1844. This is one of the two surviving houses. The other is its neighbor, 168 Cote Saint Antoine. And the house itself, uh, it, we probably owe its very high level of authenticity and certainly its equally high level of integrity to the fact that short, within four decades of it being built, it was transferred to a family called the Good Family who continued to occupy it for about 140 years. And so they have really, we owe to them this remarkable um, ensemble of a building and a site. Uh, the Goods were quite famous local gardeners and experimental cultivators. And so the garden itself is also quite an extraordinary um, artifact, if you want to call it that. So um, the building has been for many years one of the few uh, character uh, uh, category one star buildings in the city. We have over 4,000 buildings in the city, and we have uh, just slightly over 40 buildings that have been categorized as category one star. So it indicates to you that about 1% of our population of buildings 
are this extraordinary. And although it has a status of a category one star building that protects its exterior, but it doesn't protect the overall site and it doesn't protect the interiors. And by giving it this heritage recognition, which has been downloaded from the province onto the municipalities, we will be able to protect le tout, the entire ensemble of the building and its site and its interiors. And so um, uh, I'm not quite certain what we want to, if we want to read all of this to you, it is to say that uh, Westmount has for a very long time been very conscious of the value of uh, the buildings in its domain. We have the oldest review um, commission in the province. Uh, in fact, I believe it might be in Canada, dating from 1916. So we've just finished celebrating our centenary. We have, um, um, if you read through all of these document, uh, these dates, you will see that we have been devoted for the last 50 years to increasing uh, protections and means of protecting it and communicating those protections to our citizens. In 2011, uh, we were made, we were federally recognized by Parks Canada as a National Historic District. And in 2017, uh, the first act of the uh, Westmount Heritage Council was to designate the Glen Arch as our first uh, heritage immovable. And then in 2018, uh, the Prince of Wales himself, because he does validate the decisions of the committee, he uh, 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 awarded the City of Westmount the Prince of Wales Prize for demonstrating outstanding municipal heritage leadership, which is quite an honor. It's a rare one in the country and it's certainly nice to have been uh, to have received that honor. And so right now we are coming to the last uh, line on this slide, which is to say that we are seeking um, the municipal heritage recognition for this extraordinary and dare I say it, unique property in Westmount. Okay. So, uh, shall I introduce the site? Okay, so it, uh, there's some dry statistics that don't really in any way uh, indicate how marvelous the building is. We are not going to be showing you any interiors of the building because quite frankly, it is a private residence and the city wishes to respect the privacy of the owners. So if you're expecting any such images, I'm, you will be disappointed. However, uh, you can see that the site sits on Cote Antoine Road, which is a First Nations trail that carved its way through um, what was to become Westmount. Um, sitting right on that very ancient trail is um, the property that uh, was um, made into four separate lots in the 1840s, as I say, when the rest of the city was wilderness. And um, here in 1868, you can begin to quite understand it was still wilderness. So uh, 25 or so years after the buildings were built, they remained virtually their own neighbors. But they were in themselves encouraging of development along Cote Saint Antoine. And one of the things that was brought forward in the historic analysis was that these buildings were a motor, if you want, for the continuing development of Cote Saint Antoine. It's interesting to note, and of course that no longer exists, that just to uh, the south, more or less around where uh, Selwyn House and City Hall is and the church, uh, there was once a building quarry. So um, this is the heritage character area today. And you will note that there are a number of category one buildings. The red dot shows you the um, 178, the good house that we are seeking the heritage recognition for today. Um, and there are equally quite a number of important ensemble buildings as well. The, there were two studies that were undertaken by the uh, city to ensure that we understood the heritage values of the 
uh, Good House. Those uh, were done by Luce Lafontaine Architects in um, with the um, input, uh, the scholarship of Professor Christina Cameron. And then there was a landscape study done by um, Williams uh, Akui Asalan, known as WAA, um, um, piloted by Ron Williams, uh, former professor of landscape architecture at um, the Université de Montréal. Um, and the report, which I believe is accessible to the citizens, um, will, uh, and so you can consult it if you want, uh, discusses the history of the building, its um, heritage values, which uh, derive from its history, its age, its um, uh, connection to the Jewish community, its um, extraordinary position on St. Antoine Street uh, through its um, contextual uh, values uh, that largely have to do with its extraordinary landscape. And finally, its architectural values as a rare example of Greek revival architecture in Montreal. Well, there you go. And of course, it's stunningly intact interior. So uh, we just glimpse in the lower, in the right-hand corner, uh, a bit of the fireplace. All of the detailing of the house is intact, the plaster work, the moldings, the windows, the fireplaces, the wide board flooring, the cabinetry. It's, it's basically been handed down from every generation of the Good family to the next intact. They were a little bit um, edgy and they installed a bathroom sometime in the 1940s. And uh, so who would like to take over this uh, link? Thank you, Julia. Uh, we will continue um, by discussing the bylaw draft. You see on the screen two links. Uh, we have the link for the French um, projet de règlement, projet de règlement, and the English bylaw draft. It's available on the city website. The link can be found on the council page of the city website under the September 8th, 2020 council meeting. So essentially the bylaw draft um, is divided in um, eight sections and what it outlines, uh, it begins by, out, by, by outlining the purpose of the designation. Uh, what I will go through this evening is uh, the reason for the designation. For one, um, the, the, this, this section of the bylaw is, is divided in several sections. So the first part being the historical value. I will skim through uh, the points. However, I see that the screen is not quite showing all of the points. I believe that, okay. I, I apologize if you don't see the bottom part of the screen, I see that it might be uh, cropped off. So the first part is the historical value because the good house was built between 1840 and 1844. As was mentioned earlier, it's one of the oldest houses in West Mount. Um, it's worse giving it the heritage uh, recognition because it's also located on Côte Saint-Antoine Road, which is an artery of, a ma of major importance in the development and history of the cities of Westmount, both Westmount and Montreal, and because it influenced the development of the surrounding er area, as was mentioned by Ms. Julia Gersovich. As, as we just discussed, the architectural value of this uh, residence is, is extremely high, is exceptional. It is a rare example of Greek revival architecture in Quebec. It's one of the remaining, one of the four houses originally made that made up the Metcalf Terrace, today only to remain. It also has, uh, is extremely intact. It has not undergone any significant alterations since it was built. Um, because of the integrity of its construction in stone and its, and and of its other materials because of the integrity of its interior, the layout of its interior and its materials and finishes, and because it was built by a renowned architect. The landscaping value, it's a typical in English garden of the era. Um, we're 
giving it the heritage recognition because of the integrity of its landscaping, including the fencing and the division and sequences of the spaces, because of the stewardship and dedication of the good family, which helped preserve the unbroken continuity of its exceptional landscaping over the course of several generations, because its gardening includes species of, of interest, such as trillium and the ginkgo biloba tree, and because the property serves as a landmark. The emblematic value, because the good house is one of the oldest houses of the city, because it is one of the first testimonies of urban planning, and because it, its presence is etched in the city's collective memory because of its architecture and environment. So that was the section on why we are uh, offering the or giving the heritage um, recognition to this residence. Um, the bylaw details that we, the, the bylaw relies, details and also relies on the following procedures in place to structure and guide all proposed works. Um, we will rely on the municipal regulations for all uh, applications that come to the city for proposed modifications or proposed works. Uh, the municipal regulations include the current bylaws in place, which are the zoning bylaws and the PEEA, uh, the SPAPE um, bylaw, which is the PAC uh, process, uh, where which the PAC uh, recommends favorably or unfavorably recommends uh, projects to council. I want to remind you that council is the decisionary body for all, this, for all recommendations. Uh, the bylaw also heavily relies on the Parks Canada document uh, called the Standards and Guidelines for the Conservation of Historic Places in Canada, which is basically the foundation of um, um, preservation, rent, uh, restoration, etc. of historic buildings. It's, it's a guide and we heavily rely on this guide. We also rely on the heritage reports to inform um, to, to inform which elements of the site and the building as well, the exterior and, and, and the interior, um, the elements which have a heritage value. Again, uh, the idea is not to um, freeze the building in time. We understand that this building must be inhabited by a family for it to uh, continue serving its purpose. And uh, like all buildings, they need to be um, serviced, they need to be modernized, they need to be, uh, services need to be replaced, uh, up upgraded, etc. cetera. Um, the purpose of the heritage recognition is to protect elements um, that have high heritage value, um, define them and protect them. Uh, the elements that don't have high heritage value um, of course, can be um, modified um, in, in ways that are deemed acceptable. And lastly, uh, the bylaw also re relies on the local heritage recommendation, uh, which was put forward to um, council and uh, which is, uh, will serve as a guideline at the urban planning department for all projects that come in um, proposing modifications or changes to um, the building and the site. Once again, the local heritage council is, a, is an advisory committee and um, it is uh, ultimately the council that um, makes the final um, approval on, on um, projects that come into the urban planning department. Okay, so that was the um, end of presenting the bylaw. If um, Ms. Councillor Lala, if you would like to explain how the residents can submit their comments. You're on mute. You're on mute. So sorry. So from September 16th to October 1st, 2020, written comments from any interested person may be submitted in writing to legal at westmount.org. Alors en français, du le 6 septembre au 1er octobre 2020, toute personne intéressée pourra soumettre des commentaires écrits à l'adresse suivante legal at westmount.org. Voilà. 
So that's from today until uh, the 1st of October. So in lieu of a public consultation per se, we will be accepting your comments in writing. And next, will we be moving to the question period now? I think so. All right, so I would ask um, Elizabeth Simard uh, from our communications department um, if we've received any uh, questions. Bonjour tout le monde, est-ce que vous m'entendez? Oui. Yes, I will, um, I will say to you that this part of the um, uh, of the meeting or the public um, hearing that we're uh, embarking on today will be 40 minutes in length, as has been uh, asked. Every every person who puts forward a question will be asked to, to have written or state their name and their address so that it is follows the same uh, rhythm that we do in normal public hearings that occur in, in the council chamber or at Victoria Hall. So could I ask for the first question, Elizabeth? Oui, en fait, on n'a toujours pas de questions dans le live chat sur YouTube. Donc, pour l'instant, on n'a pas de questions. Um, donc, à ce moment-là, on peut attendre encore quelques minutes et encore une fois, euh, encourager les gens à soumettre leurs commentaires ou questions euh, via l'adresse qui a été donnée plus tôt dans la présentation. Peut-être, right. Elisabeth, tu veux répéter l'adresse. Oui, euh, excusez-moi, je ne l'ai pas sous les yeux. Ah oui, voilà, c'est legal at westmount.org. So legal at westmount.org. Um, if you have any questions, you can submit them now. Uh, I must say to you that we don't have any downtime um, halftime show. So we'll just be sort of waiting for the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I make a clarification? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in order to receive questions this evening, people, residents must go to the YouTube uh, live. Oh, that's what I thought. With yeah. the chat. With regards to submitting commentary to the legal department, then this is through legal at westmount.org. And those will be received over a two week period. This evening, if you want to submit a question live, it cannot be done through legal at westmount.org. It must be done through the YouTube chat platform. Sorry. Yes, you are correct. And if you look under the more button of the chat, you'll find the chat and then put it through there. This is a bit like a telephone. We're waiting yes. for your questions. <laughs> People are standing by for your questions. Operators are live. <laughs> Operators are standing by for your questions. <laughs> Donc, toujours pas de questions sur le YouTube live. All right. Um, Do we have any indication how many people have accessed this presentation? When I checked earlier, there were 24 participants, including ourselves. Yeah. Okay, well, we're just um, going to give it another five minutes. And then I, if there is no question, period, I will ask Councillor Lollum to declare the session over. So it's se it's 7.35, we started this. Uh, it's, we are a minute into it. So we'll just wait another few minutes and see if we have uh, provoked any public um, participation or questions. I'm informed by Councillor Pert, who's watching on YouTube Live, that there are now 31 watching. 31 people, but no questions. Thank you, Councillor Pert. <laughs> We could crowdsource something while we're waiting here. <laughs> well, I, it's possible that uh, those participating would rather submit their questions um, in writing um, through our Westbound, our legal at westbound.org. It's possible. So um, I would say then that I would like to thank everybody. Thank for their participation tonight um, to the 31 people besides ourselves who uh, have uh, signed in. And um, uh, we welcome uh, your commentaries and uh, 
I wish you all a very good night and thank our panel, uh, our committee, and uh, the great work uh, through our administration from Yuki uh, Krobas and Nathalie Jodouin. Um, thank you all very much and I wish you all a very good evening. Yeah. Good night. Thank you.